Hi, I'm Eric Hawkins from Park Tool. This is C. Calvin Jones, and we're here for New and Blue, episode eight. Today we're going to talk about 12 new tools, and then we're going to uh, talk about what's coming up with uh, uh, repair help, mm -hmm. and we're going to show you a history of multi-tools. So let's dive right in on the tools. Um, right in front of me here, we've got the GSC-3 and the GSC-4, which uh, we've always had a GSC-1, which is in the beginning it was gear clean brush. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the S and the C came from, but mm -hmm. it's a gear clean brush. And now we have two new versions of that. This one shaped basically for? The cassettes, that cassettes, nice yep. angle, compound angle, they're curve and an angle. It's quite right. fun. Yep. Deep cleans on that. Yep. This one is long, pointy ones. Right, getting down between the sprockets. Very nice. Right. And then this end. Scraping. Yeah. Those, round jockey wheels. All those horrible crud and down anything there. Anything that's mm -hmm. that shape. But these are really nice little uh, cleaning tools. Mm -hmm. So, Calvin, why don't you tell us about the BBT 47. Dash 12 and the BBT 47 mm -hmm. dash 16. Right, so we've taken a tool, the BBT 47, split it in half so you can have the choice of what you want. Also, increased uh, compatibility with different brands and different standards. So, the dash 12, 12 splines. Okay, ready? 12, it's 47 dash 16, 16 splines. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, it goes on, 3 8 drive, torque it, tighten it, loosen it, as you like. We've got two new torque wrenches. So we make click style torque wrenches that you basically dial up your uh, torque mm -hmm. uh, spec. These are beam style and they've been around a long time and we used to make these, now we're making our own. And tell us how this differs in use than a click style. Right, so the click style you wind up basically a spring and then the end kind of clicks over. This one, of course, based on science, which is simply steel flexing. So as you pull it tighter and tighter, this beam flexes, and we can measure the effort here across the scale here. So you watch, watch, watch. You know what the torque is, you're done. Right, so not a torque simple. limiter in any way. Right. Just to measure torque. We have two different models, mm -hmm. TW 1.2, TW 2.2, mm -hmm. and they, there's a, basically a small range and then a much bigger range. And one and a little one. Right. This is an MWF3. Mm -hmm. This is a great little tool and it really combines nicely, it pairs nicely with, with this one. So this is for your, your flare nut fittings here. This is a hollow bolt and use a two-end wrench that can deform that, causing leaks. This wraps around it nicely and a great partner for this. There we are. Now we can apply the correct torque manufacturer specification. Right. So seven and an eight millimeter. The column So it basically goes two-thirds away around it. Yep. Captures. So that you're not crushing that mm -hmm. hollow fastener. That's correct. Uh, but you're still getting good purchase on it. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell us about this tool, Calvin. Oh, the clamping oh, spoke holder. I do. This is a really good tool. It's going to squeeze spokes, especially the straight pole. So these can turn and turn. This clamps it, and you can tighten the nipple down here. keeps it from rotating. But what are these other clamps? It clamps this way and this way. So right and left-handed, also on wide-bladed spokes, which can tend to twist up. So right. So you want tool. to prevent the wind-up. Yep. And how close would you use this to where you're actually you turning the nipple? Right down, right down on down, top. Yeah, right. That's right, because you want to hold close as you can to the turning. That's what. So that's a lot about. of times when you get tight, the whole spoke will wind up. Not with the. And CH, that's going to prevent yes. that. So you're actually making the nut do its job on the that's spoke. That's correct. That's correct. So. All right, and that looks like. Something goes in it. Yes. <laughs> this one's empty. We sell these empty. Chief. Right now, now, we sell them empty. You fill them up with sealant, all sorts of different sealants, and that list is on, on our chart. Inject it into your tubeless system. You want to service the tire, break the bead, you can stick it in and take the sealant out, 
do your work and then put it back in. So, so. it's big enough for a, the right amount of fluid. That's is right. really the, the difference Correct. with this right. one. Instead of small syringes, you we've bet. gone with a bigger syringe. Yeah, I saw mountain bikes a lot. Little roadie bikes, not so much. So all controlled right there. Right. Mm -hmm. So on my right and on my left are the PCS 9.3 and 10.3, our third versions of these home mechanic repair stands. And um, we've done some updates uh, to make them smoother operating, to make them um, more secure when you set them up and more solid. It's a natural evolution that we keep making these better. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are out in the market now. And as everything is during these times, we're, we're making them as fast as we can. Uh, tell us about this multi-tool because th this is the latest iteration yes. in our long history of multi-tools. This is the MTB5. Right, it's got a lot going on, a lot of hex keys uh, all over the bike and we have them covered here. And when it's folded up, it feels nice in the hand. It feels very sturdy. That's this nice U-bolt we mm -hmm. got going on. So this big steel bolt through here, tightened down with nuts here, really makes it a powerful tool. And it's got a nice eight millimeter for the, the, the crank, uh, crank arm over here. Six, five, four, three, two, one, three, two. It's not a one. No one. Nope. And then cross tip, of course, your, your torques for your uh, rotors, et cetera. Chain tool. Chain tool. Mm -hmm. A couple of spoke wrench slots here. Right. And a slot for rotors. That's right. Lining your rotor. To emergency rotor. use only. That's, that's right. You're under the, under the tree there. The right. bear's chasing. You get your rotor straightened and go. Right. And one reason to make this tool so strong is because of that eight millimeter. Yes. Because those are they're yeah. always, always tight. Yep. And you, so you have to make the rest of the tool strong enough to mm -hmm. make that operable. Mm -hmm. So the MTB5 our newest multi-tool. Why don't you come with me now and we're gonna go and talk to Dan Garceau, um, one of the guys that's been our, our staff the longest, and we're gonna talk about our history of multi-tools. So let's go downstairs. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we are down in our workshop, and this is the MTB5 that we were just talking about upstairs, uh, our newest multi-tool. But I'm here with Dan Garceau, who's been with Park Tool for almost 30 years. So he's seen the history of uh, multi-tools uh, as much as anybody. So we're just gonna talk about where we started and then where we ended up. So this is where we started. Doesn't look like the common everyday multi-tool now, but this was three different hexes in our AWS One. The AWS One has turned into this AWS One. And uh, basically we mold L-shaped hex wrenches in here now, whereas this one, we pressed bits into an aluminum center. Then, you remember this one, Dan, this was basically a uh, screwdriver version of the same thing. I do remember it, yeah. It was from the mid-80s up until the mid-90s we offered uh, that model. Right, so two screwdrivers, a quarter drive with three sockets, and this was our packaging for it. Big and blue, right? That's right, Yeah, that's right. Then we moved to our first fold-up wrench, which we actually bought from a company that was already making them. Steel case, we made two different versions. So we made this one, AWS 4, and then we also made an AWS 5, and that one had uh, two, two and a half, three, four, five and six uh, millimeter hexes right. in the steel case. Right, and this is four, five and six and two screwdrivers. Now we also kind of copied that same formula with our AWS 9 and 10, which we still make. Then we started to get into what is considered a multi-tool now, where you're trying to uh, do as many functions as you can. This was the prototype of our MTB1. And um, basically you can see a chain tool in there and hexes, but this is the finished product. So if you wanna open that up, slides open, chain tool, we saw lots of them. The outside of the case uh, made uh, tire levers. Mm -hmm. and, and let's tell the funny story about how many functions we 
had with that tool. Was that that one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was that one. Yeah, the, the goal at the time was to uh, add as many functions as possible to a multi-tool. So we thought it would be a good idea to put uh, a ruler on, uh, on the outside of the uh, case. And uh, we shipped, I don't know, many thousands of these until we realized that the, on some of them, the plastic kind of shrunk in the uh, process and it uh, uh, threw the ruler off. It wasn't so accurate. Yeah. The but we still counted accurate. it as a function. That's right. That's right. right. And then this, th that had a little brother, which was the MTB2, which didn't have a chain tool. It was just hexes. Then we went to the MTB3, which... Also sandwiched uh, a chain tool, but you could take it out and use it separately and then you drove it with this tool. And we had then the MTB 3.2. Yeah, this added some additional uh, tools to it. Uh, but not uh, a ruler. That no ruler. No ruler. No ruler. And then we had an MTB 7, which was basically all of the tools but no chain tool. So, there's two ways to make a multi-tool, really, with a chain tool or without. If you make it with, it's more functions, but it's a heavier tool. So this was uh, just a version without, without a chain tool. Now, these are, we consider these multi-tools, and these are still in our line? Well, as you mentioned, uh, the goal uh, at one point was to add as many tools to a multi-tool as possible. And then part, people started realizing, well, I, those tools have box end wrenches and that sort of thing, and I'm never going to use those. So kind of the trend was to go to a minimalist multi-tools with as few uh, tools as they needed to do uh, emergency repairs. So. Uh, just like three hex wrenches and a screwdriver. So yeah, it kind of went with the minimal one. Uh, and then we added uh, a chain tool to one. So those were the uh, IB1, the IB2, and the IB3. And we also did a lot of them because we um, started custom engraving uh, for events and, and shops and uh, uh, anybody that wanted to buy a certain quantity of uh, multi-tools, they could get it custom engraved. Uh, the I-B stands for the I-beam right down the middle. So instead of having a case on each side, we ran a beam down the middle. And we still sell a lot of these. Um, I-B-3 comes with a tire lever and a chain tool. And um, it's a great tool. It's a great carry-along tool. So that's our brief history we, uh, of multi-tools. We have made many, many more, but these were kind of the important ones as we changed over the years. And now, as we said, we're at the MTB5. So let's send it back upstairs. And we're back. So Calvin, uh, you do a lot of our videos, you and Truman, uh, repair help videos. And we want to talk about what we've been doing lately. Yes. So it's your time to tell us what we've been doing lately. Videos. Videos yeah. on wheel building. Now, this is something we've wanted to do a long time, and we've put a lot into it, a lot of thinking. So getting your rim, the hub, the, the spokes you need. How long a spoke do you need? We show you how to figure that out. Then we show you how to lace it up, pull it up. And, of course, we have wheel truing to get it tight and straight and round. So that's been a lot of fun. We also have some new... Tubeless, updated tubeless, sorry. taping them, sealing them up, getting them to seat, sealing inside. So all new on our YouTube. Right, and you can check out the whole library on YouTube, including wheel straightening once you build the wheel, yes. as you mentioned. That's right. We want to uh, mention our social media and how you can see Calvin and Truman on the YouTube channel, um, also Instagram, mm -hmm. and newly Kristen, newly launched TikTok. That's right. Why are we on TikTok? We're not on the TikTok because, well, Chief, it's because that's where all the action is and all the There's kids all are the going. action is there, right. So we want to just reach out to people. We're really inviting you to come look at the stuff with content on how to adjust your gears and so on. But so we're short just, little Yeah, we're using that TikTok, TikTok as a little trick. Sure. Right. So we'd love to see your home repair shops and you can uh, post those uh, on Instagram and with the hashtag wrench from home and that's at Park Tool Blue. TikTok is the same, at Park Tool Blue. 
So with that, welcome to the new tools. We invite you again to visit us in lots of different ways. And I guess it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. See ya.